Hi again, it's Fiona again. I thought in this week's video I'd start to explain to you why I really believe that we should be as vegans responsible for where our food comes from. I try and grow as much as I can on our three and a quarter acres uh, and I'll show you in this episode some of the fruit trees you can grow in a small suburban backyard. In part two of this video I'll show you larger fruit trees if you've got a little bit more land what what fruit trees you can grow so uh, we're just about to go and pick up another greenhouse today I've got my greenhouse absolutely full I'll show you that in a minute and I don't know how many times I've said we're not going to pick up something after a night shift but off we go again after a night shift We just got back and I'm just going to have some fruit salad before I go out and water my plants and then I'll show you some of the fruit trees in our yard. One of the staple fruits for a suburban backyard is a lemon and a lime. This one is a Tahitian lime and we've got a Eureka lemon planted and we find that they fruit most of the year. So really handy for, you know, in your lemon water or cooking. Just great to be able to go and pick your own lemon and lime. This little guy is a peanut butter fruit. Uh, he's looking a little bit wilty because it's already starting to get hot today. But these are a nice compact little tree. They're really great for a small garden and it's a really unusual taste. I personally really don't like peanut butter, but I like the fruit on these. So got a couple of, it's going to be really covered in fruit. Got a couple of fruit here. This is what it looks like when it's ripe. Here we've got a grape that's really starting to take off. Grapes are really easy as long as you haven't got soil that gets too waterlogged. Um, with for a small space, if you've got a nice little fence, you can grow it along. And this one is a native passion fruit, almost weedy, but <laughs> they're really, they're really quite nice. I'll show you a close up of the little fruit on them in a minute. It just self seeds and comes up everywhere. And this guy is an edible canner. You can actually eat the roots of the canner. It's nice little red flowers that the birds like and the roots are edible. So this is the fruit of the little native passion fruit. When they're ripe, they actually turn orange and they're quite sweet. Another really good small tree is Japoticaba. Uh, the fruit grows in on the trunk and it's, it's quite a compact little tree. This tree is about five years old and it was quite slow growing at the beginning, but once they start to take off, they really get a good growth spurt. You can keep it pruned to this sort of height if you don't want it too tall in your backyard. So these are blueberries, uh, I grow them in a pot because it's, they like acid soil and it's, it's easier to keep the soil how they like it and because we're in such a dry area it's much easier to water them. When they use fruit they just get absolutely loaded with fruit, I've just got to be quick to beat the bird who has really got a taste for blueberries. So this one's acerola, it's a South American plant. Um, you can see here it's in flower. It's really quite pretty 
as even as an ornamental but it gets the most beautiful sweet red fruit and they actually use the fruit for lollies to sweeten lollies it's got one of the highest vitamin C levels of any fruit even higher than oranges and a lot of other things this one's probably about four or five years old now and you can keep it pruned to whatever shape you want We've got quite a few different types of bananas in our yard because we've got a bigger yard but you could easily put one of the smaller bananas in a suburban backyard. So this is the, a dwarf banana, probably more suited for your really small backyards. As you can see it doesn't take up much room at all. So a banana is actually a herb. You can see that this plant here has got fruit when the fruit's finished you'll cut that that trunk out and you'll get new suckers come up which will bear fruit as well so these are bisexual pawpaw uh, they're only they've only been in for about a year they've got little you can see close into the trunk they've got little flowers but these ones probably won't bear fruit this year. These flowers will drop and hopefully it will fruit next year. This is a black sapote. Uh, they don't take up a lot of room either. The chocolate pudding fruit. I'll show you a close up of the fruit in a minute. Really nice little plant. So when the fruit's ripe it goes a really chocolatey colour. And you can have it with ice cream or just on its own. We also have a white sapote planted but it's not in fruit at the moment and it's a very similar tree to this one. If you had enough room you could have one of each. So we've got quite a few different guavas planted along here. We actually planted these as a windbreak to slow down the westerly winds on the vegetable garden but they've grown really well. They're very hardy and the chickens love the fruit as well. So we've just shown you some of the fruit trees that we have growing in our yard. We're in quite an extreme climate here. We get heavy frosts in winter some years. Sometimes we don't get a lot of rain, we're in drought and other times we get flood and everything's waterlogged. So it just shows you can grow fruit trees just about anywhere. In summer we can get temperatures 40 degrees Celsius and above. Even if you've got a small little backyard you can put in some of the fruit trees we've shown and get your own fruit. It's really quite easy. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything we've shown you today or anything else about our garden just leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.